Combined from early forms of Okinawan karate and adapted to blend into the Japanese culture, Shotokan has flourished across the world, spawning several derivative arts and even working its way up into the UFC. So, how did Shotokan become the most popular and the most influential style of karate in the world? Well, we're going to answer that in today's conclusion of the history of Shotokan. I would like to thank some of our viewers for their help with this video. A special thanks to William Armenteros, Keith Westmoreland, and Sensei Santino Ramos for helping connect us with footage, and a special thanks to Ryan Mooney from Combat Karate for filming original footage for this series. Now this is part three of the history of Shotokan, and if you haven't seen parts one and two yet, I highly encourage you to check them out. Part one shows us the origin of the art that founder Gichin Funakoshi put together, and part two takes a closer look at the art and its standards that are still present today, even in the MMA. And you can find a link to both of those in the video description below. Okay, so what makes Shotokan the most influential style of karate in the world? In order to begin to answer that, we need to define its place in the history of karate. Traditional karate originated in Okinawa. With local fighting systems combined with Chinese influences, this led to the rise of three primary classifications of Okinawan karate, or te as it was called at the time. So we had Shurite, Nahate, and Tomarite, each named after the village it was primarily present in. Now Gichin Funakoshi had an extensive training in Shurite and Nahate in the form of Shorinru and Shoreru respectively. He combined a lot of the elements between the two systems, infused a strong sense of his philosophy, and he took it to Japan, calling it simply karate, or empty hand. And again, we went into much more detail in part one, but this is just to get us started. So Shotokan became very popular in Japan, and it spread very quickly. But before we could talk about how it grew and branched into future arts, let's take a moment and acknowledge the history and contribution of the Okinawan arts. Because to be quite honest, without them, Shotokan would not exist and it would not have proliferated into the several arts that we have today. So many traditionalists will consider the Okinawan karate to be the true official type of karate, and they wouldn't be wrong. However, I think it's very important to both respect its origin while also appreciating and exploring the ways that karate has grown and evolved from there, and I believe that Shotokan has been a very powerful vehicle in that respect. So before we talk about where Shotokan has taken karate, let's observe how it differentiated from its source material. So how do Okinawan karate and Japanese karate compare? Well, I've talked to enough people who have trained them both to know that it would have to be a video in and of itself to cover this adequately. There are some big differences between them, both in philosophy and in technique. Now this is by no means a comprehensive comparison, but rather just a few ways in which they differ. In Japan, formality and honor are extremely important, and they often take a regimented approach to their cultural activities, extending to the martial arts. Now there is a strict sense of etiquette in Japanese dojos, for example, the requirement of bowing before and after class and in response to instruction from the sensei. Also in Japanese karate, priority is often placed on form, timing, and perfection of technique. Uniformity plays a big role, and in an art such as Shotokan, it is extremely efficient to teach a large academy of students at one time if everything is well regimented. It preserves the details of technique and also facilitates in the transmission of the knowledge. In contrast, Okinawan karate tends to be a little less formal, less emphasis on bowing and formality, and dojos in general tend to have smaller rosters. As a result of this, a lot of Okinawan senseis will often tailor techniques based on the individuals learning it, focusing more on the efficiency of what works for that person as opposed to a uniform solution intended for a large class. Now, this uniformity has probably contributed to how fast Shotokan spread around the world, becoming one of the most common styles of karate taught. It is streamlined, efficient, and even Funakoshi himself is said to have wanted to implement it into elementary schools as a core subject. Traditional Okinawan schools tend to be smaller, often hidden within the town, with a tendency towards individualized teachings over mass instruction. Also, generally speaking, you can see a lot of differences in stances. Japanese karate tends to focus on developing the lower body and implementing some deep stances. Now, this is often attributed to Funakoshi's son Gigo, who loved deep stances, diverse kicks, and loved to compete. 
This in contrast to his father, who had preferred the higher stances he had learned in the traditional Okinawan Shirite and Nahate. Now it's pretty interesting to watch a performance of a kata that exists in both Japanese and Okinawan styles of karate. Again, generally speaking, you'll often see a greater emphasis on lower stances in Japanese kata and higher, more upper body focused movements in Okinawan kata. When it comes to martial arts weapons, you're more likely to see them in Okinawan karate. Now this is not to say that Japanese systems don't use them, but typically they focus more on open hand techniques. And honestly, most of the traditional weapons you see associated with karate, you know, the bow staff, nunchucks, sai, the tongfa, all originated in Okinawa, and kabuto, the martial way, is a big part of Okinawan arts. So while you may see weapons in both styles, you're more likely to encounter them in the Okinawan teachings, at least historically. Another stark difference is competition. Japanese karate has far more emphasis on competition in sport than Okinawan karate does. In Okinawa, karate is embedded into a part of their lifestyle. A person doesn't merely do karate, it is part of their heritage and their family life. Now while some Okinawan schools do compete, such as Gujiru and Shitoru, which are represented in the World Karate Federation, it is far more common to see Japanese karate take part in sport fighting. Now with all that being said, both Okinawan and Japanese karate have a lot to offer, and it would be a very interesting topic to go down that rabbit hole in a future episode, as there are a lot more differences than what we can cover today. Sensei Jesse Enkamp from the Karate Nerd YouTube channel has an absolutely fantastic mini-series on his trip to Okinawa and experience with Okinawan Karate, and I have included those links in the description below if you are interested in checking those out. In 1930, Funakoshi officially established his organization, Dai Nihon Karate Do Kenkyu Kai, which was later known as the Shoto Kai, which basically refers to Shoto society. Now, Shoto was Funakoshi's pen name that he used when he wrote poetry, and Shoto means pine waves, referring to the sound that wind makes as it ripples through pine trees. So, with Shotokan taking root in Japan and flourishing among a wide range of students, it was only a matter of time before the art itself became a starting point for future systems. Prior to World War II, during the Japanese occupation of Korea, the Koreans had limited options regarding the martial arts. A lot of their own local ways were forbidden, and many were forced to learn Japanese arts. Shotokan was one of those primary arts being taught, so naturally it became implemented into the training of any Koreans that wanted to train in the martial arts at that time. And one of these men was the man who would go on to later found Tang Sudo. Now another Korean national who was in Japan immediately after the end of World War II was Masoyama. He grew a love for the martial arts and he sought out the training of Shotokan and he was actually a direct student under Gigo Funakoshi, the son of founder Gijin Funakoshi. Now, this was also the time that American soldiers were based in Japan and Okinawa and they began their introduction to karate. In the 40s, karate was a very unfamiliar art in America, so many soldiers wanted to learn this new combat style. So right away, I think we can start to see how some of the early seeds were planted. Shotokan was growing in scale and popularity, and it was in 1949 that some of Funukoshi's senior students decided to establish an association to help govern, promote, educate, and spread the teachings of Shotokan. So, led by Masatoshi Nakayama, the Japan Karate Association, or JKA, was formally established as the central authority on Shotokan. An elderly Funakoshi, aged 80 at this time, was named an honorary head of the organization. Now we have already established that the basis of Tangsudo was Shotokan. You see, Ki mixed in some other influences from Chinese and other martial arts to direct the path of Tangsudo. Now this includes Taekwondo, which is the derivative of Tangsudo, and still has a lot of Shotokan in his lineage. So Masoyama had trained directly under Funakoshi's son Gigo in Shotokan, and then later he took up the Okinawan art of Gojiru, training under the senior student of founder Chojin Miyagi. Now, Masoyama took this material and then went into years of seclusion into the mountains for vigorous training, and he came back and introduced his own art of Kyokushin Karate, an amalgam of Shotokan and Okinawan systems. Actually, in fact, Kyokushin retains two sets of kata, both from Shotokan and Goju-ru. Kyokushin has then since also branched off and spawned further derivatives such as Kudo, Enshin Karate, Ashihara Karate, and others. Wadoru and Kajukenbo have also been influenced by Shotokan in their early development. Wadaru was founded by Hironori Otsuka in 1939. Otsuka was one of the first students to receive a black belt in Shotokan Karate directly from Gichin Funakoshi, and then he went to blend in Shotokan with Okinawan Karate and Jiu Jitsu and came up with what is now known as Wadaru. There are trace elements of Shotokan and Kajukabo, a greater mixed pot of arts founded by the efforts of many martial artists, including the notable Adriano Imperato. So Shotokan has definitely cemented its place as one of the pillars of the martial arts and it's hard to ignore the influence and reach it has and it continues to have.
Unfortunately, Shotokan was not immune to the affliction that most major martial arts are stricken with, politics. Now, when we announced the series, I received many messages asking me to highlight the differences between all of the different Shotokan associations. I'm going to go over a very brief summary of some of the couple top prominent ones, but a full deeper look will have to be in a future video. The topic of that scale alone is an episode in and of itself. But like most arts that have toxic politics, we start at the same trigger, the death of the founder. Gichin Funakoshi passed away in 1957 at 88 years old. He had left his mark on the history of the martial arts, but what he did not leave was a successor. It did not take long for the rifts to begin, starting with his own funeral. Funakoshi's original organization, the Shotokai, formed in 1930 and focused on the spread and education of Shotokan. They represented students from many universities to help spread the art. Now, this was the first and oldest Shotokan organization. The Japan Karate Association, or JKA, registered with the Japanese government in 1957, just prior to Funakoshi's death. They wished to represent Shotokan on a larger professional scale. The JKA was the only legally recognized karate association at the time. Now, there are said to have been disputes over the arrangements of Funakoshi's funeral. Supposedly, both the Shotokai and JKA asserted the right to arrange it, and the rift between organizations only continued from there. Now, as with, happens with any organization with new leadership, changes began to occur. The Shotokai was largely influenced by one of Funakoshi's senior students, Shigeru Igami. Igami had originally began training under Funakoshi's son, Gigo, but then he began to stray away from Shotokan's competitive nature. He did not believe that karate should be a sport and he withdrew the organization from tournaments and other competitive events. Igami continued to alter the teaching of the system, focusing on looser and less explosive training methods and placing greater importance on spirituality, mental balance, and sticking closer to the Nijukun or the 20 principles established by Funakoshi and stressing an emphasis on kata. I would like to read an excerpt from the Shotokai official website. Shotokai follows the words of Master Funakoshi, who said, Karate Do is an art for training our own minds, sports that can be practiced by people with little physical strength, an art for maintaining health, and the art of self-defense. Therefore, Karate Do is not a martial art only for people who have strong muscles and physical strength, but is an art that all people of all ages all over the world need and can practice. Shotokai follows the last instruction of Master Funakoshi. There are no contests in karate. Be devoted to kata. Shotokai has a lesson system that focuses on practicing kata. The Shotokai often refers to itself as the system closest to the original teachings of Gichin Funakoshi. Now the JKA went a different direction. First, they asserted their position of being the only legally recognized karate organization. Led by Masatoshi Nakayama, the JKA began to make changes to the material, hardening the art and focusing on explosive power and rigorous training. Now, unlike the Shotokai, they do engage in competition, but they take it much more seriously than your typical point-based tournaments. Two different excerpts from their official website highlight this philosophy. Unlike many other karate organizations, the JKA was not created as an organization whose major purpose is holding matches and tournaments. Though it does sponsor tournaments, its major focus is the practice of karate. Its purpose is the teaching of karate as a way of life. The website also goes to say, Karate is not a sport one plays for points. In JKA Kumite, there are no weight classifications and no arbitrary point system. JKA tournaments are much stricter. At the JKA, there is only Ippon, one full point, which means you have downed your opponent and won. The basis of JKA Karate is the ability to take down your opponent, regardless of size or weight, with one blow. There is no room for incremental points in such a tradition. The difference is obvious. We teach our students how to gain mastery of themselves and overwhelm the opponent. Two pretty diverse philosophies, and unfortunately, these were not the only disagreements. Other senior students disagreed with the direction the JKA was going with the Shotokan, and the JKA splintered off into several groups, which we will have to elaborate more on in another future episode. Shotokan Karate found a strong foothold in the United States as well. Shotokan Karate of America was founded in 1959 by Tsutomu Ochima, who currently at age 89 still leads the organization and teaches to this day. Oshima was a direct student of Gichin Funakoshi himself and in 1955 came to America to continue school at the University of Southern California. Now at the school, he opened the first American Karate Club in 1957 and established the Southern California Karate Association in 1959, later being renamed to Shotokan Karate of America. The SKA is a nonprofit organization with a strong goal to lead Shotokan in the United States and reach a wide base of students, offering traditional karate under one of the original students of the system. The SKA does perform a competition in tournaments, although they stress a balance on karate as a lifestyle. 
They are also known for holding special training events twice a year, typically in the summer and the winter. The goal of these events is to engage in an intense training session for a short duration with large groups of practitioners. It's basically a karate camp. Kyokushin Karate is also known for their intense karate camps held twice a year. So one notable mark on the SKA is that Oshima received his fifth Dan black belt directly from Genshin Funakoshi himself. Now this was the highest rank ever given out by Funakoshi, and in the spirit of the tradition of the SKA, they retain the original ranking system used by Funakoshi and does not recognize any ranks above Godan. Now there are many, many, many more Shotokan organizations and notable practitioners worth getting into, but it would not do them any justice to just cram them in here. And I do apologize to those of you who are hoping to dig deeper into that topic. However, they would require an entire episode for themselves, and I thought it was worth doing a quick overview just to kind of set the first stone of that path. I do, of course, welcome any contributions to those of you who can expand or elaborate or want to add to the different Shotokan associations of the world. And if we get enough information, then we can do a follow-up episode in the near future. So, how is Shotokan one of the most influential styles of karate in the world? Well, it started with one man learning the roots of Okinawan Karate, combining them into his own practice, resorting to the poet that he was, and infusing his own deep philosophy and crafting a balance between the importance of physical and mental training. He knew how to adapt the system to fit different political paradigms. He adopted and established standards in ranking, etiquette, practice, and teaching that resonated across generations of future karate styles. His influence rippled back to Okinawan roots, some of which took on some of his new standards, and the threads of Shotokan can still be found today in many derivative arts and even in the UFC. So this concludes our series on the history of Shotokan. Now, Shotokan may not have been the original form of karate, but there is no doubt that Kinshin Funakoshi was a true pioneer and his legacy will be embedded in the foundation of martial arts forever. Thank you all so much for watching our History of Shotokan series. Now, these videos take a tremendous amount of time and effort, so if you do enjoy them and would like to see more art history videos, then please join us on Patreon. It helps keep the channel going, and the more support we get, the more of these we get to do. We also have a ton of exclusive content and episodes available, so there's lots of stuff for you to dig into. We appreciate all of you, especially anyone who likes and subscribes and joins us here on the mat every week.